Welcome to Season 1, Episode 4 of Sprott Gold Talk Radio. Today we're going to have an overview on platinum and palladium. And as a recap, for those that have listened to the last few episodes, we spent most of our time on the two traditional precious metals, both gold and silver, both from a physical standpoint and an equity standpoint. Today, given the current market environment, I thought it would be interesting to have a special guest on, Sheree Kakutkar, who is a senior portfolio manager at Sprott Asset Management, to talk about specifically platinum and palladium and give an overview on both metals. Sheree, thank you first and foremost for joining us today. Before we go into these questions, I think it would be helpful for the audience to hear a little bit about you as a person, how you found your way to Sprott, and what your day-to-day does look like, in fact, at Sprott when you're dealing with precious metals, specifically both platinum and palladium. Thanks, Ed, for having me on. I've been at Sprott since 2010. I started at Sprott as an intern analyst focusing on small cap and growth stocks. And subsequently, my focus slowly shifted towards resources and precious metals in particular. My background is in psychology. As an undergrad, I have an MBA from the University of Toronto, and I've also completed my CFA charter. So I tend to look at things from more of a numerical perspective rather than a geotechnical perspective. And in 2012, I started exploring the idea of launching a product that was focused on platinum and palladium. And this is around the time that I was asked to come in and, and start creating an internal knowledge base of platinum and palladium. And I've really been looking at these metals since then. Now, over the years, obviously, my focus has been a little bit more broader. So I am one of the members of the Sprott Gold team, which includes John Hathaway, Doug Rowe, Maria Smirnova, Jason Mayer, Justin Tolman. And on a day-to-day basis, our job is primarily focused on active equity investing, and we try uncover the most amount of alpha in this sector that we can. Well, that's, that's great. Thank you for that. And, you know, I've been here for close to six years now, and it's been great to have the interaction with you and, and get your insight both on white papers you've written over the years, as well as just general conversation on, on your take on the market. So certainly appreciate that relationship. I want to go into to 2020 for a moment. 2020 provided an interesting year for markets and metals alike. And year to date, 2021 continues to support both platinum and palladium with each metal up nicely. But over the last year or so, there's been a bit of a flip-flop. And when you think about performance patterns in general, platinum did quite well last year, but it looks like this year, palladium's really taken the leadership role again. And over a longer term period, palladium seems to maintain that leadership role. If you could talk a little bit about that, and from an investment standpoint, in your view, what's really happening? Are we at the top of a market, or is this market really getting started, particularly as it relates to platinum? So 2020 was a very interesting year in that we had a major economic shock that was caused by COVID. And this led to all sorts of disruptions in the logistics chain, on the mining side, obviously, as well as the manufacturing side. So palladium really has been in a deficit for almost as long as I have been following this particular metal. And in 2020, what we saw occur was the automotive production took a small dip. Obviously, the mining production took a small dip as well. But because the overwhelming percentage of the demand for palladium comes from the automotive sector, by and large, we saw a dip in the overall trend for palladium. That obviously has corrected itself starting in the second half of 2020 and 2021 uh, we have palladium knocking on the $3,000 per ounce door. Platinum, on the other hand, did a little bit better in 2020 because it has seen an increasing level of investor interest. It is also considered to be a precious metal. And the platinum uh, supply was much more severely disrupted last year in 2020 than the palladium supply was because, as we have all heard about, South Africa was very, very severely impacted by covid And many of these mines had to be shut down for a protracted amount of time. And as a result, the supply for platinum came off much more sharply than palladium supply did. And and for those reasons, we saw platinum do a little bit better in 2020. It is it is doing quite well in 2021, obviously. It seems to be um, breaking out into a nice trend upward. 
Uh, but Palladium really, uh, it, it just regathered its momentum. And that's what we're seeing it establish back in 2021. Now, when we look at it from a perspective of whether or not these metals are approaching a top, I think, as, as you know, Ed, it's very difficult to call tops and bottoms with any real degree of accuracy. But what we have in both metals is that the supply demand trends, which are currently playing out for both metals, are very favorable from the demand side of the equation. And the supply side continues to be challenged. So I don't really see any particular reason as to why these metals could be topping out here. And I think that the trends that have been playing out over the past several quarters and years for both these metals are firmly in place and, and we'll probably continue to see these price trends persist for both platinum and palladium. You just mentioned something I think that's really interesting. So often we talk about investments from a demand standpoint and from a reasoning standpoint, why this or why that, and this is what you should be thinking about. But you know, the supply side often gets overlooked. And I think in particular, talking about metals like platinum and palladium, in some case, they're actually interchangeable. When you talk about the automotive industry and it's a byproduct of pricing, we've seen that happen in the past. Let's talk about recycling for a moment. I remember reading about a year or so ago when platinum was really skyrocketing in price. I guess it it was mostly in Europe, but I'm sure it happened in the U.S. as well. People were literally taking mufflers off of cars for the metal from a recycling standpoint. From a supply standpoint, how does recycling actually play a role in the overall price direction? And how should investors think about that? So recycling for both platinum and palladium is a very important component of the overall supply chain. And it's because both platinum and palladium are number one, exceedingly rare to find, and two, they're quite difficult to actually separate into the individual elements of platinum and palladium. These metals occur in the Earth's crust as the PGM group metals. And depending on which geography you look at, it might have a little bit more palladium, or if you're looking at South African mines, for example, they may have a little bit more platinum by content. These metals are very rare to find, very difficult to mine, and as a result, the recycling element is very important. In case of platinum, for example, the total amount of mine supply on any given year, and I'm not going to talk about 2020 because that was a disrupted year and we saw supply decline for both platinum and palladium last year. But in a general year, we'll typically have about 6 million ounces of platinum coming out of mines. And we have approximately 2 million ounces entering the supply chain as recycled platinum metal. Now, if you look at palladium, in any given year, there's about just over 7 million ounces of supply that comes out of mines every year. And again, I'm not using 2020 for palladium as well. And from a year-over-year perspective, we typically see just north of 3 million ounces of supply enter through the recycling chain. So the total amount of supply between mine supply of Palladium and recycled supply of palladium is around 10 million ounces in most years. And the total amount of supply of platinum available between mining and recycling is around eight to eight and a half million ounces every year. To stay on the topic of supply, clearly it's coming from mines and companies that operate those mines. Let's talk about that for a moment because you had mentioned how difficult it is to mine and the locations and where these mines sit from a jurisdiction standpoint. There's obviously risk associated with that. Let's talk about the mining stocks for a moment. Let's start with first jurisdiction, things you need to think about when you're talking about platinum and palladium mines from a risk standpoint, from an opportunity standpoint. And then let's kind of wrap that up with, with the profitability of these mines. I think that will be interesting for everyone to hear of as well, since we're on the supply side of the, the conversation right now. So when we look at both platinum and palladium, as we all know, there are certain regions in the world that are a little bit better endowed than the other when it comes to a particular resource. And when it comes to platinum and palladium, the two countries that really stand out as the key sources of supply are South Africa and Russia. Neither of these are considered to be in the sweet spot of geopolitical risk when it comes to mining equity investments for different reasons, obviously. South Africa, because it has to deal with the fallout of the apartheid and the continuing black empowerment initiatives uh, that are occurring there, which have led to a lot of strife on the ground as it relates to how the workers are paid and the, the ongoing frictions between the companies there and their labor force. 
In Russia, obviously, it's more of a question mark when it comes to the friendliness that that particular country has towards the rest of the world, and in particular, the United States. When it comes to platinum, almost 75% of the world's mined platinum comes out of South Africa. And when it comes to palladium, around 75% of the mined palladium comes from South Africa and Russia with the two almost splitting the share of the palladium. And when it comes to individual companies that are operating these particular mines with the PGM focus, a majority of them are South African domicile. We have seen these equities really struggle all the way perhaps until the end of 2017, 2018, because while palladium was doing well, platinum was not. And as a result, the overall basket revenue, which is the combination of platinum, palladium, and rhodium, was not really doing too well. And at the same time, these companies were facing a lot of labor strife as a result of the ongoing strike activities that were occurring in South Africa. And, and they do still occur periodically. But since then, we have seen palladium really take off. And we have also seen platinum find its footing. And, and it has moved upwards of $1,000 per ounce now. And a metal that no one really talks about is rhodium. It has seen its price appreciate from just around $1,000 per ounce. It's close to $30,000 per ounce right now. So these three metals have really helped change the fortunes of the South African mining equities. When it comes to mining equities and especially mining equities in the jurisdictions like South Africa, the volatility that comes with it, it goes both ways. Right now, the trend is quite robust. But if you start to see any breakdowns in the price of platinum, palladium or rhodium, it is quite possible that these equities may correct. The other thing that investors are really focused on now, but no one seems to know the answer, although it's starting to become modestly more clear, is the whole debate about inflation versus deflation, whether that's the metals market, the general economy, and the overall stock market, the real estate market. It does seem like inflation is slowly working its way into the economy. And more often now in articles that you read, you're seeing the term super cycle as it relates to commodities. And you know, unlike gold, which tends to be more of a monetary metal and silver tends to be more of a hybrid metal. To me, and, and maybe to a lot of the listeners, platinum and palladium really is a pure industrial metal as far as its use, whether it's from a manufacturing standpoint, from a jewelry standpoint, and so forth. So I think I know the answer to this as far as, you know, which uh, move in the market would be better, you know, inflation or deflation. Walk us through that a little bit of, of what that environment might look like for both metals from a pricing standpoint. If you could comment on that, that would be interesting, I think, for the listeners as well. The one theme that keeps coming up when I speak with the CEOs of companies engaged in PGM production is just how overwhelming the demand for these metals is particularly for palladium, but also for our platinum in the last few years in relation to the supply that is available. As long as there are deficits in these metals, I think prices will continue to rise. And when it comes to palladium, for example, the automotive sector is scrambling in order to secure their metal. The thing that really strikes me is that the investor demand for palladium has been negative. But it's not because the investor demand has gone down for the palladium metal. It is because the metals traders have been rating the ETFs that hold the metal in order to secure the supply for the automotive chain. And that really has been part of the reason why we have seen this parabolic move in palladium. What this has also started to force the automotive industry to do is because of the scarcity for palladium and because of the increasing emission standards that we're seeing all around the world, they are starting to slowly substitute back towards platinum. Not in a meaningful manner just yet, but we're starting to see sniffs of this. So when I look at it from a perspective of inflation or deflation, it's quite easy and it is quite apparent for someone who is looking at it from a supply demand perspective to look at these metals and say, that the, the underlying trends are still robust, they're still solid. And as a result, it's very difficult to say that the price movement will be anything but up into the right for both of these metals. 
we have this conversation all the time, you know, gold versus silver. It sounds like to me, in the platinum and palladium allocation, you really probably should be thinking about both. Uh, I always like to ask my guests to sort of finish with one special nugget from an investment standpoint. Love to hear that from you now, and then we will uh, wrap up our uh, episode four podcast. The area that I'm particularly intrigued by is fuel cell applications. We have seen this term called hydrogen economy start to get used more and more often. And, And when it comes to the hydrogen economy, Platinum has a very important role to play. When it comes to fuel cell vehicles, the amount of platinum which is used in a single vehicle tends to be between 15 to 30 times a typical loading of platinum in a uh, internal combustion engine vehicle. So from that perspective, it, it is very easy to see how even if we see a small slice of the truck fleet or a small slice of the the transport buses that we have or a slice of the the moving equipment at loading docks if they transition to fuel cell powered format we can see a massive change in the trajectory of demand for platinum as a result of that so that is the one area which is particularly intriguing to me and if we start to see more and more uh, of a move towards this uh, fuel cell powered concept in, in the coming years, which I think we will, uh, we could be setting platinum up for a pretty spectacular uh, trajectory as far as the price moves for platinum goes. That's a great way to end this. And if memory serves me right, back in uh, late March, you did a nice special report. I mean, you talk specifically about that, which I think is really interesting. And we would encourage all the listeners today that have interest in learning more about not just Sprott, but Platinum and Palladium, and also to actually uh, receive a copy of the special report to either call our sales desk at 888-622-1813 or visit us at Sprott, S P R O tt.com and learn more about all the metals that we offer. With that, Shri, thank you so much for joining us today. Hopefully this was educational for our listeners to go outside the traditional storyline of just gold and silver and to dive deeper into platinum and palladium. And we look forward to having further conversations with all of our investors and all of our listeners out there. And we'll be joining you in a couple of weeks with episode five. So please like us and link to us and, and give us a listen. Take care. You have been listening to the Gold Talk podcast by Sprott Inc. For more information and insights on precious metals investing, please visit Sprott.com. This podcast should not be copied, distributed, published, or reproduced whole or in part. The information contained in this podcast does not constitute research or recommendation from any Sprott entity to the listener. Neither Sprott nor any of its affiliates make any representation or warranty as to the accuracy or completeness of the statements or any information contained in this podcast. And any liability, therefore, including in respect of direct, indirect, or consequential loss or damage is expressly disclaimed. The views expressed in this podcast are not necessarily those of Sprott, and Sprott is not providing any financial, economic, legal, accounting, or tax advice or recommendations in this podcast. In addition, the receipt of this podcast by any listener is not to be taken as constituting the giving of investment advice by Sprott to that listener, nor to constitute such person a client of any Sprott entity. Past performance is no indication of future results.